I once came down the stairs in my house to find literally hundreds of maggots walking all in the same direction on my wood floor in my living room. And it led to a dead squirrel in my fireplace. True story. <laughs> the joys of home ownership. And you may be thinking of being a homeowner. And uh, some people have said, you better do a home inspection. Some people said, don't do a home inspection. And there's never a shortage of friends and family members who uh, have all the wisdom in the world. Drives me crazy as a realtor, but uh, there's always gonna be someone that gives you advice and they know so much. Although our parents have probably lived in the very same house for the last 50 years, if you're my age, and haven't had a whole lot of experience going from one house to the next and so on and so on. So let us just talk about whether it's a good idea to do a home inspection when you're buying a house. Commonly when you do uh, an offer on a house, you'll see conditions. So here's the price, here's the dates, here's what I want to buy, here are the inclusions, and then there are commonly uh, conditions like condition on financing or home inspection. Those are the two biggest conditions you'll usually see in a purchase of a, a resale residential home. So as a first time home buyer, you might just walk into a house and go, ah, oh, yay, I love this. Oh my gosh, look at the kitchen and look at the colors and look at the backyard and just kind of want to, you just want to jump right into that house without taking the time to do the stuff that's not as fun, but it's super important, right? It's, it's super important to know that there are not things hidden in there that you would want to know ahead of time because hidden things cost money when you have to fix them, right? Or if they get worse, we don't even want to go there. But uh, you, you probably have a real estate agent and hopefully they are going to give you all the information I'm going to give you right now because they should have your best interests at heart instead of just making a quick deal. So in case they're not telling you these things, Take it from me, I have, I, I, I don't know you, you don't know me, and I have nothing to lose if you just think I'm full of garbage. So first of all, let me tell you what you can uh, expect from a home inspection. It usually costs about $400 around that for a, a regular size home. And that, I would say that is between a townhouse to a 2,500 square foot house. And some home inspectors might ask for more when you get to luxury styles. They probably will ask for more when you get to luxury styles of homes. Um, but that's a regular ballpark. I've been in real estate almost 19 years and I don't think I've ever seen a different price than that. So that's a, and I'm in uh, Ontario. I'm in Southern Simcoe, South Simcoe. Um, so that's how much it costs. And you typically, after an offer, let's say your offer is accepted, even with the conditions that you have, you typically have five business days to arrange a home inspection at your expense, not the seller's expense, but your own. And uh, your realtor can usually pull that together in, in two days. I mean, home inspectors aren't extremely busy. I guess sometimes they might be, but I haven't experienced that. Usually within two or three days. And you can choose to be there or you can choose to just have your realtor there for you. And the home inspector will give you uh, a book, like a, maybe they'll send it to you in your email if you're lucky with some photographs of difficult areas or whatever. So I have a list I wanted to share with you about the type of things that a home inspector will look at when they're looking at your house. And then I wanna kinda go into uh, what if they do find deficiencies in those areas. So. Um, here's the list, okay? So they usually start at the roof. Hopefully it's not covered in snow, because if it is, they won't go there. And uh, what the, the kind of thing they can see on the roof is if shingles are old, they can kind of date the shingles just by how they look. If they've kind of curled up, if they've shrunken, they can tell you what kind of quality of shingles you have and what kind of life expectancy they would have. So. Uh, imagine if they said, oh my gosh, you, I'm surprised if you don't have a leak right now because these shingles are ancient and they have to be repaired immediately. That's something you're going to want to know um, because if that's a cost that uh, you have to consider immediately, definitely that's important information, right? They will also look at things like flashing. So that's the protecting, sometimes vinyl, sometimes metal around the bottom of the chimney or down the valleys or around vents. 
make sure they're in place, they haven't blown away in a storm, like we just had in Barrie a couple of weeks ago, or that they're, they're not leaking. And some of them can actually uh, warp or shrink if they're made of a material that gets really hot and warped. So that's the kind of stuff you have to keep on top of. Even after you own the house, you have to keep on top of that. So they're gonna look at stuff like that. Um, also, they're going to see from there how many vents are there in this roof because back in the, in the uh, 70s and 80s and before that, ventilation wasn't a huge thing. It was, you might have seen one vent coming out of somebody's roof. God forbid, my goodness. Now you see them in, in soffits, you see tons of these big vents on top of people's houses. And there's a reason for that. So especially if you're looking at an older house, these are major issues. So the next thing I have on my list is the attic. The home inspector will put on something that looks like a hazmat suit, it's kind of funny. And they'll put up a ladder and they crawl up that little hole in someone's closet and they'll immediately see if the seal where you enter the attic is in place because it's important, right, for your health and for even keeping the, the temperatures level in, in the house or whatever the case may be, you want that seal to be solid, right? And they're right away going to look for mold. Ooh, that's that word nobody wants to hear when they're uh, waiting for the results of a home inspection because mold is bad, especially black mold. I think it's called stachybotrys, I think. Why do I know that? I don't know. But uh, if you have had an attic that has never been ventilated properly, you probably have mold in the attic. And if you find that as, as a buyer, it really uh, impacts the value of that home you're looking at because it's mold, it's a stigma that it, it's not good. It's really, really not good. So uh, the home inspector is gonna look for that. I do want to say though that mold can be uh, rectified. You can hire a company that I think they, the word is remediates the mold. Another hazmat suit guy goes up and sprays it and kills it. Um, but it's also in the insulation, it could be in your vents. It's a really bad thing. And, and another segment I'm going to go more into uh, deficiencies like that in a home, but just know that a home inspector looks for that and you're going to want to know that. It's not always something you can see just by sticking your head up the attic, attic hatch and it's not just, it's not going to jump out at you. Sometimes it's only in one corner, sometimes it's just in one spot. They're also going to look at insulation and type of insulation because you could have something called uh, UFI, um insulation, which is, it's like a, a blown in insulation and in some cases, not all and mostly not, but some cases there's uh, urea formaldehyde in there, asbestos in, in that type of insulation. And that's uh, very dangerous for your health and they say it's cancer causing. You know what, I'm, I'm a believer that it's in so many products in our homes, but that happens to be one that has a big red flag and again, will lower the value of that home and be a health hazard for you. So you're going to wanna to know that. Um, the next thing I have on my list is, uh, yeah, wiring, wiring's a biggie. And the home inspector will look into your panel. He might see that it's, hey, it's an updated panel or who it's, it's still got the old fuses that used to pop out whenever we had too much power going. You're gonna to wanna to know if you have that, if you have aluminum wiring. Some people have changed some of their wiring and updated it to copper and, and some have not. Some have left uh, some stuff in the ceilings that was hard to reach and their aluminum is still up there, but they, they don't tell you about that, right? And the home inspector won't necessarily see that because he can't see into the ceiling. But you're gonna wanna know that because then you're going to want to make that safe for your family. And again, there's an expense for that too. And your insurance company, is going to also ask you what type of wiring is in the house. I myself can't look into a panel, a hydro panel, and tell you if there's aluminum wiring. I can't, I can't see that, I don't know, I don't know. And I've asked a home inspector, inspector to tell me, how can I tell? Because I'd like to be able to tell my, my clients that if I can, and he said, you kind of have to cut the wire open uh, to see, so I'm not doing that. So uh, home inspector, yay. Of course, there are some areas that we as realtors know uh, have aluminum wiring in that, like in Newmarket, for example, Quaker Hill had a lot of aluminum wiring. So some people have updated, some have not. And very, very important to know that. And another type of wiring you want to stay miles away from is knob and tube wiring. So that comes from homes that were from way back, 
you know, that are more than a century old. Uh, knob and tube was really cool and I, I actually always find it super cool to see leftover knob and tube, but you know what? Your insurance company won't think it's cool at all. So you're going to want to know that. And if you don't know how to recognize it or recognize the type of outlets you might see when, when there's knob and tube wiring, then uh, home inspector, yeah, please. You must, updating a house and wiring is very, very, very expensive. Um, so the next one, plumbing. And again, home inspector's looking at plumbing. He's looking at all kinds of different areas of plumbing to see if it's copper, to see if it's Kitech plumbing. I've done another segment on how you don't want to see that type of plumbing uh, in the house. And he's going to also teach you about the systems connected to water, like whether you have a filtration system or water softener, whatever the case may be, every house is different. I, I see things these days I don't even, I don't even recognize. <laughs> And uh, you might even have a UV filter if you have a well. Again, I don't actually know what that looks like, although um, I know what it does. I don't know what it looks like. So it sure is nice to have a home inspector uh, tell you about that. So they oftentimes also have moisture meters. Not every home inspector has a moisture meter, but you can ask and they can put it put this meter up against the wall it's like a it looks like a stud finder kind of and and they can tell you if there's moisture in the walls like wouldn't you like to know that if there's moisture in the stone of your foundation if you have uh, concrete or concrete block foundation whatever the case may be sometimes you'll see something called efflorescence it's like a white fur and that usually means there's moisture that's coming out of the stone and you want to know what's going on there right so the next thing definitely is foundation and there's not a whole lot to see if the basement is finished right but there can be evidence of past water damage or uh, some cracks will be harmless and the home inspector can tell you too don't worry about that one but do worry about this one some is a structural thing some some has been there for years and years and has been patched or filled or whatever the case may be. So it would be uh, really shocking if every homeowner or home buyer knew everything about the different hazards when it comes to a foundation. So yeah, so another thing, uh, leaks, yeah, we talked about leaks, but not just foundation leaks, but also plumbing leaks, right? They all, I always watch them half fill a bathtub to see if there's anything that comes through the ceiling in the kitchen or wherever wherever it may be or if any other water comes out anywhere else and they leave it running and running and running and uh, I, I always wondered why are you leaving the water running so long but it sure is important to know right and they might point out hey did you notice that that brown spot in the ceiling over there let's find out if that is old news and it was repaired or if there still is an issue with water and if there was a water issue, is there a mold there now? Oh, there's that, there's that M word again, nobody wants to hear. But uh, so um, this, this list is not the end of the story at all, but I'm just mentioning the bigger things. On the outside of the house, he's going to, I'm saying he, but I've never actually met a female home inspector. I actually haven't. So they're going to look at the slope of the property and, and drainage and, see if uh, it looks like water is not going to cause damage going down your foundation into your basement water is probably the worst thing you ever want to have a problem with in a, in a property so a home inspector might say hey you might want to uh, check the grade on this or have a company come and regrade how the uh, how the flow of water is going towards the house but I lived in a property that was lower than the road and water always came towards the property and we had drainage systems in place. So a home inspector can also point out to the buyer, look, there's a drain there or there's a downspout going into the ground there that's leading over here. And that's really solid information. And they check outlets too and little things like that. They kind of check your stove superficially and uh, check they turn on your furnace turn off your furnace ac blah, blah. they turn on your dishwasher just superficially so the nicest thing is that they they'll do a walk around with you as the buyer and show you how systems work so if you don't understand how to let's say um change a, a main filter that comes from a, a well on the property because it has to come up out of the well into your home and into a pressure tank if you don't get how that system works they're going to uh, they're going to explain it to you uh, or if you see some kind of um, HVAC thing 
which I, I'm constantly seeing new things I can't identify. Home inspectors seen it before and they can tell you what you're looking at and what kind of maintenance it might take or how to change the filter on your furnace, for example. Or they, they'll just give you advice. And especially if you're new to the newer parts that a house has, it's very different now from 50 years ago. So even if our parents are moving, they're seeing things in homes that they've never seen before. They've never seen before and that's okay. So thank God you've paid a home inspector to, so that you can say, hey, what is that? Or how does that work or whatever, you know? So um, that's good. So some things that a home inspector doesn't look at, I was just mentioning they superficially look at the appliances. They definitely don't take them apart. Um, they just turn them on and make sure they turn on. That's pretty much it. And if they see the back element of the stove isn't working, they'll tell you about that. Or if there's something broken that they can see, but they're not inspecting it. They're not servicing it. They're just looking very superficially. They also will turn on the furnace, but they're not doing a furnace inspection. They, they don't know anything about how that's being maintained. Um, and they're not, they don't know how old it is. Although that you can see things on labels inside. Um, they're not inspecting your furnace. They're also not inspecting fireplaces. And that's a big deal because especially wood fireplaces, um, they need something called a wet certificate. You think right now I could come up with what those, what the W-E-T-T -T stands for, but wood energy something. And it is something uh, that uh, an inspector will look at the safety of it and that things are the proper distance away and that the, the flu is working and oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm not a, a fireplace inspector by any means, but that's a completely different inspection. It's a good thing to get. It usually costs between one and $200 and you give your insurance, your house insurance company an, uh, a number that the inspector gives you and then your house insurance will be slightly reduced because you have a safety certificate for a wood stove. It's only wood stoves. It's not gas, propane, none of that. It's just wood stoves. So, or wood fireplaces, anything with wood. Yeah, so a uh, home inspector won't look at that. He might from a distance go, ah, have you noticed that crack or whatever, but he's not doing any ins any inspection that he'll stand behind for that at all. And, and they don't hide that. They tell you that out in the open. They also will not um, inspect a well or a septic system at all, at all. No comments of any kind, no nothing. They do look at water pressure. They look at water pressure and that's about it. They're not testing your water. They're not looking how old your septic is or if it's working properly. They're not gonna tell you how full your septic tank is or anything that is related to those two items. But you can hire and I recommend it, you can hire inspectors for those things who specialize in those things. Then your realtor should be able to recommend someone in that geographic area, which makes the most sense. They also won't, ins home inspectors won't inspect a shed or a workshop on the property. They might look from a distance and point out that the shingles are rotten, um, but they, they don't inspect those. Unless you, I guess if you pay them extra, they'll, they'll do that too. And the last thing that they don't do is uh, they can't look inside walls. So no homeowner I've ever known would let a home inspector tear open a wall to look behind drywall. That is a very um, major uh, problem when it comes to buying things. And if there has ever been a leak, homeowners should tell you about it, but do they, will they, will they admit that they knew? You know, there's not a whole lot you can do about that, but those things are called latent defects. And I might do another segment on that, although it's so boring, but things you can't see or your home inspector can't see, but they're issues that are hidden somehow, um, or that ha uh, issues that have happened in the past, like a flood in the basement. Those would be things that the seller should be disclosing to you, but in my experience, they don't always do so. No, 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 no. So what happens after home inspection? That lets the home inspector sent you a report and you look it through and you know, you're know you umming and eyeing, and then you need to know what your options are. Because keep in mind, you're still in that condition stage of the offer. So your offer is not firm until you waive the condition on home inspection by a certain date. So here we are, we have the home inspection report and the biggest mistake you can make at this moment is nitpick little things. I see this happen so many times and I always say to my buyers before the home inspection, 
This is not intended for you to say, oh, fix that outlet, it has a crack in it, or that little handle is falling off, or you're missing bulbs here. That's not the purpose of a home inspection. And uh, when uh, the seller accepts an offer based on a home inspection, they expect that you're gonna be reasonable. Every house has little stuff. Every house you could make a whole list of little stupid things that need to be fixed, a hole in the wall or whatever the case may be. That's not the purpose of a home inspection. It is intended for the big stuff. The big stuff that you wouldn't have seen when you just walked through and that are perhaps a surprise and that make you kind of rethink uh, your, your position here in, in this offer. So the first thing that can happen is that your realtor can negotiate a price reduction. Let's say, for example, you found mold in the attic. Let's hope you don't, but let, let, let's imagine that you found mold in the attic and the buyer says, holy smokes, uh, I did not expect that. That's the true meaning of a home inspection. So that you now have this thing that uh, you need to decide whether you come or go or you ask for price reduction. So if you as the buyer say, you know what, I'll still take this house if they give me such and such amount of money off my original offer. That's an option. You can you can continue to move ahead and you can uh, uh, you know you can make a suggestion to the seller saying I'm not going to run away here, but this is an issue nobody knew about and it's worth a lot of money to fix it. And uh, you know your the two agents will typically have a discussion and come to some kind of an agreement and if you're both happy with the agreement the purchasing agent will do an amendment showing the price reduction um, and it's probably not a good idea to, to put anything in the offer that you acknowledge there is mold I don't think the bank would like to hear that when you're getting a mortgage but I like to keep a paper trail and email for that kind of stuff but um, so that's your option number one price adjustment based on something you found that was a surprise from when you put in the initial offer. Uh, it always drives me crazy when people say, oh, the shingles are old, but it was obvious as anything when you drove up the driveway and when you put in the offer, you could see that the shingles were old. So don't give me that. Like, that's what I wanna say, but I'm just way too sweet to people. In the end, you know what, it works out, but um, I see that commonly, that people are trying to nickel and dime and, and get in the back door what they couldn't get in the front door. There's a lot of ugliness in real estate, I hate to tell you. <laughs> so uh, your second option, oh yeah, is to walk away completely. If, if your list is so exhaustive, and, and I have been at a home inspection where there were over something like 120 deficiencies, and they were my very good friends, um, and I recommended they walk away because that's a lot of deficiencies. Um, thankfully they did. So if you choose to walk away because there's just way too many things, it's completely up to you. The seller has nothing to say. They could, they could come and say, oh, come on, let me fix it. It's still completely 100% up to you if you want to walk away. And that initial deposit you gave when the offer was conditionally accepted, you'll get back 100% with no deductions. That takes five to 10 days to get that money back, depending on how it went in. But um, the third idea is uh, a waiver. And a waiver is when everything is pretty darn good and you're really impressed with this house. There's nothing major, maybe a couple of little things, but nothing you're gonna make any kind of issue out of. And your agent is going to prepare something called a waiver. And then the deal is firm. That, that means you accept everything that you found in your home inspection and the deal is totally firm and that waiver will make the deal solid. Everybody's happy. So, and the fourth thing is an amendment. I kind of partially said that with the price price reduction part, but you can uh, refuse to come together as it is, but amend maybe that they will repair something for you. Maybe there's a long closing and they, they say, hey, we're gonna replace that stove for you. Could happen, it does happen. We didn't notice that's not working. To keep this deal together, we're going to replace that stove for you or we're going to, I don't know, put all the bulbs in that we're missing. I've heard so many things or whatever the case may be. They, they decide that they will deal with it and uh, your agent can do an amendment saying, uh, based on the fact they're gonna do this stuff, we're gonna firm up right now. So again the biggest mistake people make is nitpicking little stuff please don't nitpick little stuff it just 
is upsetting and annoying. And keep in mind, everybody has little stuff. Every house has little stuff. And uh, it's normal, it's normal living. It's not a brand new home and it's just reasonable to, ex to accept some things and leave it be. So I hope that was helpful and move forward and just make the right choices. It'll all be good in the end.